CataractCoach.com, case 100 for a beginning surgeon. Let's all offer some advice to help this young surgeon in training. Now, let's start the case here. We've sped the video up, and we're going to show you case 100 here. Let's see the main incision starting off. A little bit too much clear cornea for me. I wish he'd hit the limbal vessels a little bit there. So now putting in probably some anesthetic inside the eye. Draping not so hot. Look at all the oily stuff in the tear film all across the eye. Again, not ideal here. Remember, check out retinarounds.com, our sister channel. You're going to learn a lot about retina. If you're a resident, you better be subscribing. Don't even talk back about that. You got to subscribe. It's a must. Now, here's the viscoelastic inside the eye. Look at the incision. I don't like it. A little bit of chevron shape, a little bit ugly. Here comes a pair of diseases. That looks reasonable. Okay. And what are we going to do next? Holding on to the eye here, maybe fixating the eye. Another pair of so probably going to do some bimanual. But when you poke and grab the conjunctival like this, look what you do. Subconjunctival hemorrhage. Now, if I'm going to have cataract surgery on my eyes, don't just keep grabbing my conj and causing subconj hemorrhages. Come on, be more elegant than that. And now look at the main incision. I told you, it's not a great incision. The roof is not matching the floor of the incision. And you started too much in the clear cornea. Now, starting off the rex is here. Pulling here. Okay, let's see what we're going to do. Goal here is obviously like a five, five and a half millimeter rexus. The eye is nicely positioned in primary. I like that. So grabbing with the forceps here, bringing this around. Be careful of those danger zones. You're saying, what danger zone? You better go to Cataract Coach and look it up. There's a video called Rexus Danger Zones, and you need to look that one up. Don't make me explain basic stuff when you can already look it up yourself. Now, continuing the rexus here, I like this. I don't mind many grabs. As you know, I had a video recently showing that I'll do a rexus sometimes with multiple grabs, whatever it takes. I want the end result to be beautiful, and this looks actually like a pretty good-looking rexus. So for case 100, you know what? Let me tell you, I like the rexus. It's a good job. All right, there's the rexus. It's complete. It's pretty well-centered. Now, hydro dissection with a flat cannula. Oh, nucleus came right out, and you push it back in the bag. Now, I would have liked the nucleus out of the bag. So it's a little bit rough here. You see the eyes all, see the cornea is all wrinkly? You'll see those same wrinkles tomorrow morning. You'll see decimate folds tomorrow morning because of that. So don't do that. Now, here comes the phago probe going inside the eye. And let's see what's going to happen. I'm cleaning up some anterior cortical material. Yes, of course, the video sped up. Now, let's see the technique. We already saw the title, but it's going to be a groove. So there's the groove. Looking good, looking good. I like to get a little more sub-incisional with the groove, but you're doing a pretty reasonable job here. I like it. There's the sub-incisional. But as you, as you start going down, though, get the eye back in primary. So now let's see. It's a, part, it's a reasonable groove. Are you going to split right away? Instruments down in the groove. Yeah, there's a split. Propagate it all the way through. Okay, rotates good. Rotates pretty good. Okay, duh, divide and conquer we're going to do here. Not stop and chop. So another little groove, split it up into quadrants. That's reasonable. In case 100, divide and conquer is still okay. Remember, your goal is to ultimately graduate to learning all the techniques of nucleofractus. That means not just divide and conquer, but also stop and chop and then vacal chop, both horizontal and vertical. Now, nuclear piece is coming out fast. Yes, the video sped up, so it looks like it's going super fast motion, but it's pretty reasonable. And chop, chop, that's good. Sub chopping. So that's a good start to learning how to chop. So a little bit of a divide and conquer, and then some kind of mini chop. But look at the AC instability. Look at the bounce in the anterior chamber. Look at that. See the iris bounces and the capsule bounces? That's fluidic imbalance. You need to check your FACO settings. Don't copy some senior doctor settings. You need to figure out your own. In a case like this, you saw too much chamber bounce. What do you need? More infusion pressure. You need more fluid going in the eye, less fluid coming out of the eye. So let's drop your aspiration flow rate by, let's say, I'd say here you want to drop it by maybe 25%. So if you're doing 40 cc's a minute, let's drop it down to like 32 cc's a minute. So drop your aspiration flow rate and increase your infusion pressure to get better chamber stability. Now, you'll see a lot more stability here with bimanual eye. Why is that? Well, you're limited as to how much you can suction out of the eye. Think about it, right? So the inflow and outflow balance will be a little better here. Now, switching hands. Let's see the technique. Switching hands to get good access. Here comes the infusion on the right hand. And then get that in the eye. Careful. It's a lot of manipulation there. Left hand going inside. So you're doing a pretty good job. So for a young doctor, I commend you. I mean, just by sending a video in, you show me you're serious about your learning. I like it. I would tell you, fix your draping. Draping's good, but there's a lot of gunky stuff and oil on the tear film. You want to fix that before you start your case. Fix the incision. The incision's not so hot. I'm not a huge fan. The rexus was good. The divide and conquer is good. I think you can start to advance to stop and chop. And there was a chamber instability during nucleus removal, so you definitely got to adjust your phaco settings there. Here comes the lens going in the capsule bag. 
That's nicely done. Get that thing rotated around. So a monofocal acrylic single piece lens looks like a Technus ZC Boo or, or some similar type lens. Now let's see, court, uh, viscoelastic removal using the bi, uh, bi-manual IA approach. You probably want to tilt at least a little bit get behind that optic. Remember, you're going to get torque lenses one day, right? You're going to advance the torque lenses, and you're going to need to remove the viscoelastic from behind the optic. So for torque lens especially, you want the optic to sit directly on the poster cap. So you'll notice in my videos, almost 100% of the time, we're going behind the optic to remove viscoelastic. So when you're starting off cases, I know you're a little bit afraid of that, so you don't necessarily do it. But you have to learn how to go behind the optic and remove viscoelastic. That's important. Put that on your list of things to learn. Now, let's watch the end of the case here coming out of the eye. And let's see how we seal up those incisions. Here's a little bit, a uh, little bit. I do a little more of the roof of the incision, but that's not too bad. And now let's seal up the hide, the pairs and DCs. That's a little bit much. Look at all that cordial leaf. I don't know if this is necessary. And now let's check all the incisions. Listen, I commend you. You did a good job. You're learning a lot. Keep up the good work but certainly got some things to improve on. Please leave your comments below. What do you think this doctor could have done differently? And remember, check out not only cataractcoach.com, but now retinarounds.com, our sister channel. It's amazing.